Hi, I am Vidya Mala. In this video, we shall learn the major rivers in India. Before we start, I need to tell you something. I hope you all know that India map work carries 10 marks in your board examination. In order to score this full marks, you need to practice map work using the map provided by the council. I'll tell you how to get it. Go to the website of our council, cisce.org. Click the download icon and download any previous year question paper. Then click the PDF file HCG2, which is your geography question paper. In the last page, you will see map of India. Take a printout of this and use it for practice. Now let's learn some basics of our India map. We all know that India is called peninsular country as it is bounded by water on three sides. Let's identify these water bodies. We have the Arabian Sea in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east and Indian Ocean in the south. Now whenever I say the direction as east and west you may get confused. Here is an easy way to remember the directions. The top is north, just like our head. The bottom is south. To remember the east and west, take your hand. Your eating hand side is east, that is your right side. I hope you all eat using your right hand. And your left hand side which I used to remember as the waist hand because we don't use it for eating. So that waist hand, that is your left side, is the west. So remember, eating hand side for east, E and E. And the other hand, that is the waist hand, is for west, W, W. Now, you can remember Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal with the letters A and B in the alphabetical order. So the first is Arabian Sea followed by Bay of Bengal. Coming to Indian Ocean, India is the crown of the Indian Ocean. So you should remember that Indian Ocean is in the south. Now let's learn our neighboring countries. So this is the international boundary. As you can see, it is indicated by dash dot dash dot. You can see this international boundary between two countries. So here we have our neighboring countries. This is Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, China, Pakistan and on the southern side we have Sri Lanka. Now let's learn to mark the major rivers of India. The major rivers in India can be divided into Himalayan rivers and peninsular rivers. The three major Himalayan river systems are River Indus, River Ganga and River Brahmaputra. All the rivers should be marked from its source to the mouth that is from its starting point till the ending point. So if you take River Indus, this is where Indus originates. It originates outside India and from here it enters into India and finally it falls into Arabian Sea. So let's mark it. So this is where Indus starts. It enters India and it goes outside India to Pakistan and finally all the three distributaries should be marked till it falls into Arabian Sea. Now there are five tributaries for River Indus. Jalam, Chenab, Ravi, Bees and Satluj in the correct order. So let's use a different color. So this is River Jalam. This is where it starts till it falls into Chenab. Or if only river Jalam is asked, you can also mark it till where it uh, meets Indus. Because it's a tributary of river Indus. And this is Chenab. Till where it falls into Ravi. 
and this is Ravi mark it till where it falls into sutlage and here we have the small river Bias this actually falls into sutlage so I am stopping till here and finally we have the largest tributary sutlage it starts outside India just like Indus and it enters India mark it till where it touches Indus so these are the five rivers now how to learn them easily I tell my children to remember the sentence Jackie Chan rose before sunrise I think you all know Jackie Chan right so Jackie J stands for Jalam Chan stands for C Chenab Rose R stands for Ravi and before the B stands for Bias sunrise the S stands for Sutlaj so you can remember the sentence Jackie Chan rose before sunrise okay easy no let's learn river Ganga and its tributaries along with Brahmaputra so like I told you all the rivers should be marked from its starting point till its ending point so this is where river Ganga originates near the Indian boundary so mark the river all the way along the Indian boundary and you can either stop it here because this is where Bangladesh starts or you can finish it till where it fo falls into Bay of Bengal because in Bangladesh river Ganga is called as Padma uh, whether you mark this area or not make sure that you label Ganga inside the Indian boundary it's the same case with river Indus also uh, even though it flows both in China as well as Pakistan you have to mark it inside the Indian boundary now let's mark the other tributaries of river Ganga so this is the first tributary river Yamuna stop it till where it flows into Ganga in Allahabad Yamuna and Ganga meets at Allahabad now the next tributary is Gomti this is river Gomti this again you have to stop it till where it touches Ganga and the next river is Gagra here again mark it till where it touches Ganga it has two tributaries you can mark them both if you want and then we have river Gandak mark it till where it touches river Ganga because after that it's river Ganga and not Gandak anymore now we mark river Kosi and finally we come to river Brahmaputra now Brahmaputra actually starts from here in China it's called as Sangpo so whether you mark this part or not it doesn't matter but this is where it enters India so it is compulsory that you mark this part inside India and you can mark it till where it falls into Bay of Bengal and here again you can either stop it till here or you can finish off till where it falls into Bay of Bengal because again here in Bangladesh it's called by a different name it is called as Jamuna so only inside the Indian borders from here till here it is called as Brahmaputra and I'm repeating again only inside the Indian boundary the arrow should be marked for river Brahmaputra let's learn how to remember these rivers that is the most important point so Ganga is having lot of tributaries remember it as there is a place called Yamuna where live two girls one is Ganga and the other one is Gomti remember it in this order don't say as Gomti and Ganga say it as Ganga and Gomti so these two girls are wearing a gagra I think you all know there is a dress called gagra choli they are wearing a gagra and they are going to a place called Gandak to see Kosi and Brahmaputra I repeat once again there is a place called Yamuna 
where live two friends ganga and gomti they are wearing a gagra and they are going to gandak to see kosi and brahmaputra easy right now coming to the rivers that originate from central india and joins yamuna and ganga so here we have river chambal and betwa the tributaries of river yamuna so when we mark make sure that you mark chambal from its starting point and end it till where it touches yamuna same way with river betwa this is the starting point end it till where it touches river yamuna and then we have the other tributaries of river ganga this is river son end it till where it touches ganga so it has one more tributary mark both and here we have river damodar so it's enough if you just touch it like this marking both the tributaries now how to remember these four rivers i tell my kids to remember the sentence chambal and betwa had a son named damodar so what is the name of their son damodar so chambal and betwa had a son named damodar now let's mark the peninsula rivers starting from river narmada this is its starting point mark it till where it ends in arabian sea then coming to tapti the small river starting point till where it touches the coastal area so that falls into arabian sea then mahanadi this is the starting point of mahanadi mark it till where it falls into bay of bengal then coming to the largest river in south india godavari mark it from its starting point till where it touches into bay of bengal then coming to krishna now coming to krishna this is its starting point mark it fully till where it flows into bay of bengal now krishna is having a tributary called tungabhadra like i have told you earlier whenever a tributary is asked mark it only till where it touches the main river krishna so krishna is the main river and whenever tungabhadra is asked you mark only the small part till where it touches the main river so coming to kaveri kaveri can be written as k a v e r i or c a u v e r y so it has different spellings whatever spelling is given in the question paper you follow that spelling so mark kaveri fully like this so now very important how to remember these rivers which is narmada which is godavari i'll tell you remember narmada tapped mahanadi i think you know the meaning of tap that is to strike someone to show them something or to call them something that is tapped so here narmada is tapping mahanadi why is narmada tapping mahanadi to show that godavari is kissing the cat godavari is kissing remember k krishna for kiss and the for tungabhadra and cat c for kaveri so i guess it's very easy now right so i think you all understood very clearly so narmada is tapping mahanadi to show that godavari is kissing the cat so easily now we have learnt all the 24 major rivers in india for the board exam when you mark these rivers please do not use different colors like this you are supposed to mark the rivers only using light blue color pencil and like i told you before don't forget the arrow should be inside the indian boundary do not mark it in china or pakistan even though the river is flowing there and third point do not forget try to write all the places using capital letters so that it's very neat and legible so all the very best for your examination i hope you all will be able to mark these rivers correctly